Hello everyone, it's Greg from Edinburgh Renaissance Fencing Academy here with another video in our short series on interpreting Renaissance fencing diagrams. Um, however, today is slightly different because we're actually going to interpret a portrait, uh, namely this one, which is the portrait of Giacomo di Grassi himself. And this can be found inside the cover of the first edition of his book, which is the Venice 1570 edition. Um, now, obviously this is not a technical fencing diagram, but we can still learn some interesting things about de Grassi's art by a close analysis of this, which is what we're going to do today. Um, so the first thing to note is that portraiture in the Renaissance period, and 1570 puts this in the late Renaissance period. So uh, Renaissance portraits were highly symbolic in nature, um, which is to say that the, the posture of the, the person in it, the, the clothes and other accoutrements that they, they had with them, were all representative of, of aspects of that person's life. Um, they weren't just random things that they, they had on them when the, the painting or the drawing was done. Um, so what I want to do is, is examine de Grassi's portrait uh, from a, a symbolic point of view and give my opinion about what these things are representing. Um, so without further ado, let's get going. So the first and perhaps most obvious thing is that de Grassi is wearing uh, some kind of uh, military dress, military gear in the picture. So we can see a steel breastplate and a plate gorget or throat protector. Um, and uh, he's also wearing what looks like a simple cross-hilted uh, soldier's sword, what would uh, be called by a 16th century English language speaker, uh, either a short sword or arming sword. Uh, and you can just see the, the handle of a, a small dagger protruding from, uh, from around his flank, where he would be wearing it at the small of his back. Um, okay, so this is the basic gear of, of uh, light troops in the Renaissance era. So the sort of stuff that would be um, issued to light infantry or light cavalry. Um, and and it's, it's basic gear. So you know, on the battlefield, they would probably have other weapons and other bits and pieces as well. But this is the, the standard gear, more or less, of the day. Um, you can also see that uh, de Grassi is, is resting his hand on a helmet on the nearby table uh, in a slightly kind of possessive way. Um, when you see this in a, in a Renaissance portrait, it's because the person is, is laying claim to whatever the object is. Um, so in short, de Grassi is laying claim to a military identity with all this stuff. Um, so uh, what this tells us is that, that he came from some kind of military background. Uh, and when we put that together with um, a few hints from the, the biographical information in the text part of his book, um, it, it starts to build up more of a picture of him because he says that he travelled around Italy as a young man and gained experience of fencing in, in different places and with different masters. Um, so it's a little bit speculative, but most likely he was traveling around as part of some military career. Uh, now, the military system in Italy in the Renaissance period was heavily based around mercenary companies. So again, we can only speculate, but it seems likely to me that uh, he had some kind of career as a mercenary soldier before uh, teaching fencing at a later point when he published his book. Um, so yeah, that's the, the first and um, maybe the most striking thing about the portrait. Um, as an aside, the sword that he's wearing uh, is a very simple one. Um, I don't believe that this is the weapon he would be fencing with in his fencing school. I think that's part of the military costume in the picture, um, but more on this later on. Um, okay, 
Um, around Degrassi, we can see uh, a whole lot of other fighting gear um, lying around or propped up against the wall. So against the wall, we can in fact see a pike, several pole arms, and what looks to me to be a kind of two-handed sword. And then scattered around on the ground, we can see a number of different bucklers and shields. And tucked underneath the, the square buckler, the targa, we can just see uh, a dagger and some kind of complex hilted sword. So now I think we can see the weapons that he would actually fence with. Um, so obviously this is a, a kind of parrying dagger and a rapier there. And the other gear that I've just described is all the stuff that is detailed in the technical instructions inside his treatise. So what we're seeing here are the tools of Degrassi's trade. So he's showing us uh, what he uses on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. In other words, what his business is. He's a fencing master. These are the tools of a fencer or a fencing master. Um, so yeah, it's particularly of note that we can see the, the actual sword he fenced with lying on the ground as opposed to the generic um, kind of sidearm type sword that he's wearing uh, as he's posing for the picture. Okay, the last important component of this um, is the, uh, the stuff on the table next to the helmet. So we can see an hourglass and uh, another tool, which is probably some calipers or maybe some mathematical compasses, uh, calipers, I think. So um, these things are measuring devices, the hourglass for measuring time and the, the calipers for measuring distance or perhaps angles or something like that. Um, so uh, what does this tell us? Well, um, this is representative of timing and measure, two of the vital theoretical principles of fencing in this era and indeed in many eras. Um, so Degrassi is here associating himself with the, the so-called new learning of the Renaissance period, so the rational, early scientific uh, approach to analysing the world. Um, so not only does this show us um, these important uh, theoretical concepts right from the start, but also he's, he's making a claim to being an educated person and he's showing us that fencing is a sophisticated and educated art. So it's something for a, for a smart person, um, which is itself an interesting point, I think. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of it as far as an overview goes. So we can learn from this, uh, firstly, that Degrassi was uh, a military man with, with military experience, uh, which lends authenticity to his descriptions of combat, of course. Uh, secondly, we can see um, the tools of his trade. So we can see that the specific gear that was associated with his style of fencing. Uh, and thirdly, we have this uh, obvious, uh, very clear symbolic connection to uh, Renaissance scientific ideas, and um, particularly the rational and systematic measurement of time and distance, um, which of course lies at the heart of his tactical approach to fencing. Um, so there you go, that there's a lot of actually interesting and important symbology contained within this um, seemingly random portrait that's stuck inside the cover of the book. Um, so yeah, that's that's all I have to say about it for today. As always, I hope you found the, the presentation interesting and enjoyable. Um, and we'll finish up there. I will return shortly with another video. Until then, take care everyone. See you next time.